If you've been around the Blender community for a while, you'd know that it's great. There's a lot of cool people, but there is so much misinformation in this space. It's like, I can't make enough videos to like point out the blatant misinformation that I see every day. You know, I see it in YouTube comments. I see it in the Facebook ad comments. I see it in the Blender help forum. It's not that these people are trying to hurt you in your Blender journey. They're doing it unintentionally. There's so much bad advice when it comes to like 3D modeling or learning Blender or anything like that. It's frustrating to see. And I actually got a comment about this just yesterday, uh, which I kind of wanted to turn into a tutorial here. So I'll put the comment on the screen right now. And the comment basically says that the Boolean modifier tends to struggle with non-manifold geometry. This is partially true. It's um, it, it does happen sometimes, but I see this all the time. People are like, it's best to learn a bit about clean topology if you're gonna be 3D modeling. These are completely mutually exclusive topics. They have nothing to do with each other. And I'm gonna kind of show you why in this video. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hop into Blender. And I first wanna discuss the idea of non-manifold geometry. You've probably heard this term before. Now, non-manifold geometry is basically anything that isn't watertight, and if it is watertight, it's also things that, um, I guess the best way to explain it is to show you, but non-manifold could be overlapping vertices, interior faces, uh, holes in the mesh, all sorts of things. And I kind of want to show you why non-manifold geometry, it has nothing to do with clean topology whatsoever. So when I see these comments, it's frustrating because it leads beginners in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna show you a very uh, basic example here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna use the default cube and I'm gonna go in, I'm just going to maybe take this face right here. I'm gonna inset this face and then I'm going to duplicate this face, extrude it down and I'm just gonna go ahead since we have two vertices there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and merge these together. I'm gonna go to merge by distance. Now, if I go into wireframe mode here, this is what we would call non-manifold geometry. Now, the reason it's non-manifold is because of um, this area right here. If I kind of go inside, this would be manifold. This would be non-manifold. And we can actually enable a tool that comes with Blender. It's called the 3D Print Toolbox, uh, because if you're doing 3D printing, you need to have manifold geometry. Uh, but if we go in here and click on check all and then go to this section, you're gonna see that it actually shows you the non-manifold edges right here directly in Blender. So, you know, I'll see comments where people are like, oh, clean topology is gonna to solve this problem, but it's not. Because if I go in here, this entire cube is made of quads. Like, it's objectively like clean topology on paper, right? If I go to select, select all by trait, faces by sides equal to four, this whole thing is made of quads, yet the geometry or yet the mesh is still non-manifold. It has nothing to do with each other. So if I go in here and I you know, click on this, what I can actually do is I can get that cleaned up. Sometimes you can actually clean this up by clicking on this button. In this case, it worked okay. I found with this plugin, it doesn't work all the time and I like to fix this manually. So I could actually go in here, I could delete out this redundant face right here and now if I go to check, you're gonna see this entire mesh is manifold. So again, we have a you know clean topology, we have quads everywhere, but we don't have a manifold mesh. These are mutually exclusive topics. They have nothing to do with each other. I'm gonna give you another example here. So let's take the same cube and let's say I had, you know, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna to go to rip vertices, which will basically um, just like make one into two. So I'm gonna to go to rip vertices and you can kind of see we have these vertices ripped off of each other. So we have one and then another on top of it. This, again, this is still a non-manifold mesh. If I go into the 3D print toolbox and go to check all, it's gonna highlight that. That's because we have these redundant vertices right here on top of each other. And again, if I go to select all by trait, faces by sides, this is a quad-based mesh. You know, I can still go in, I can add my loop cuts, it, I can do the same exact workflow, but it's still a non-manifold mesh, and this is gonna give you issues, not all the time, like if you're doing 3D printing, you know, it's gonna be problematic, but if you were just rendering this, it's not really a problem. So it kind of depends on your workflow, 
But again, this is another example where you can have a non-manifold mesh where it's going to kind of break in like a 3D printing software, potentially in another engine, right? But it's still going to have clean topology. So, you know, clean topology has nothing to do with whether the mesh is a manifold or not, right? So it's very, uh, it's, it's a different thing. Here's another example. If I go ahead and I just clean this up, now we have, you know, a perfect mesh. It's, it's a manifold. I clean that up. If I go in here and I delete out this bottom face, again, now we're going to have non-manifold edges. This would not work, for example, in a printing software. I don't do 3D printing, but it's pretty like basic information there. This would not print well. Now this would work in a game engine. This is actually you know something people would do. They would delete out faces off the bottom of the mesh if you're not going to see it. That's not an issue. I'm just trying to show you here how topology has nothing to do whatsoever with, you know, a manifold mesh. And I'll give you one more example here. A lot of people don't know this, but if I were to add in, let's say, a cube, and I'm just going to delete out this entire portion of the cube here, okay? So when it comes to like edges, faces, vertices, now every single vertex, you know, you can have multiple edges going into a vertex, right? Um, but it's a little bit different when it comes to like an edge. You can kind of see we have this face going into this edge, and we also have this face going into this edge. They're, they're adjacent, basically. Now, if you have three faces going into an edge, this is a non-manifold mesh by default. So for example, if I extrude this out, right? No matter what I try to do here, if I try to patch this up and I try to make it manifold, it's never going to be manifold because we have three faces going into one edge. So for example, if I tried to you know go in here, and just make this a manifold watertight object. Okay, well that part's fine. If I go in here and I check it, you know, that part's fine. But now if I try to patch up this part, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us an interior face. There is no way you can ever have a manifold mesh if you have three faces going into one edge. And again, this entire object right here has quad topology. There's no n-gons or anything. It's completely irrelevant. Now, these are what we call structural issues in the mesh, okay? So they have absolutely nothing to do with whether you use n-gons, whether you use triangles or quads. This is a structural issue within the mesh and they're completely separate from the topology argument. So, you know, you'll hear this typical advice online where people will be like, you know, have clean topology, it's gonna solve all your problems. You know, have quad topology, it's, it's, it's complete misinformation and I see it all the time. You have a beginner, they come into Blender, they hear that you need to use quad topology and they don't address any situations for why somebody might be using Blender. And then somebody, you know, they're learning Blender and they try to take this advice and it doesn't apply to them. So it has absolutely nothing to do with topology whatsoever and I just showed you here with some examples. These comments are literally cookie cutter, copy and paste nonsense. I see this on YouTube comments, I see it in Facebook forums, I see it in probably the worst place you can go for help, which is the Blender help forum, which is like nine out of 10 posts on there have awful advice, but um, you know, it is what it is. Now I wanna show you another example here of how you can have bad topology, but you can still have a manifold mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in Suzanne, and then I'm just gonna go in here and maybe subdivide it. Actually, I'll subdivide it in a second, but let's say, you know, Suzanne is pretty much, you know, made of all quads here, and it is also manifold. If I go in here, you're gonna see, actually, I guess Suzanne isn't manifold. I learned something new today, guys. It's uh, not all connected together. But anyways, I'm just gonna go in here. I'll just clean that up for the purpose of the tutorial, check everything, and there we go. Okay, so now we have a manifold, you know, Suzanne here. Everything's cleaned up. We have that all fixed. Now, let's say I go in here and I just start, you know, cutting in just very awful topology here, right? If I were to run a sub D on this, it's not going to run very well. So although I have really bad topology here on the top, it's still going to be a manifold object. If I go here and I go to check, you're gonna see it's fine. And the reason for that is there's no sort of overlapping geometry, there's no interior faces, there's no three faces going into one edge. This is objectively very, very bad topology. You cannot run a sub D on this. You can kind of see what happens here. Yet it's still a, a manifold mesh here. You can see that very clearly, and especially if you check it, 
It doesn't matter. You can have, again, you can have very bad topology here and you can still have a manifold object and it's gonna work, you know. I could put this into a printing software as long as there's no like physical mesh overlaps kind of like we have here and it's gonna work fine, you know. I see a bunch of people, they get into Blender for 3D printing, they have really bad topology on paper but it doesn't matter because they don't need clean topology for their workflow. And I'll just do one more example here. Let's say I go in and, you know, you've seen this in my tutorials as well. If you start using Booleans and stuff like that, you're obviously going to have n-gons on your mesh. So I could go in here and I could just start cutting with the Boolean modifier, right? Just use box cutter for that. And then I could just go in, I could apply everything. And we have n-gons everywhere, right? If I go to select, then I go to all by trait, faces by sides, and then greater than four, we have n-gons all over the place, but this is still a manifold mesh because again, topology, it has nothing to do with whether the mesh is manifold or not. So again, I can go in here and click on check. This is fine. This would print fine. I could probably use this as long as I optimize it properly in a game engine. We're not going to have any sort of issues here. However, if I wanted to run a sub D or I wanted to deform this, right? If I went in and I added in like a simple deform modifier, Right? It's not going to deform very well. This is a situation where you would actually want clean topology and quads, right? Because this won't deform well, and obviously I can't run a sub-D on this either. The point I'm making here is topology and you know a manifold object and all these different things and all these different terms you hear, they really don't have anything to do with each other. One thing is about structure and another thing is about mesh integrity. They have nothing to do with each other and pretending they're the same thing and they have any relevance to each other. What this does is it causes beginners a ton of confusion and then they get bad advice and then they come to us for help and we have to like unlearn, you know, all the bad advice they've been given. Now, another thing I want to mention here, if you do have a non-manifold mesh, it could still have clean topology. Whether or not it has quad topology or n-gons, doesn't matter. This is going to have issues with the Boolean modifier, and I want to show you why that is. So if I go to cube, I'm going to go in here, and then I'm just going to make this, like I did at the beginning of the video, I'm going to make this a non-manifold object, all right? So if I go in here and check that, you can see the non-manifold edges are right here on the top. Now again, whether this had n-gons or not is completely irrelevant because they don't really have anything to do with what I'm about to show you. So if I go in and I start to add in, you know, some booleans, the boolean modifier is going to start breaking. So like right here, we have an issue, right here we have an issue as well, and that's because the mesh is non-manifold. Now I have found that if you change the solver here to exact, you actually get um, some decent results. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but if I go into the box cutter settings here and I just make everything set to exact by default, I'll just turn that to exact, uh, there's still going to be situations where this mesh is just going to break even if we have, you know, the boolean here is set to exact. So in this case, you know, non-manifold geometry is going to be a problem and this has nothing to do with whether we have n-gons or quads. It's irrelevant. What the issue is here is the fact that we're using booleans on a non-manifold mesh. So. Again, I'm not making any sort of argument for topology here. I'm solely focused on the fact that the mesh is non-manifold, right? Again, one is about structure and one is about mesh integrity. So obviously, if you're using Booleans like this, you want to solve that problem first. You want to get in there and you want to make sure that the whole entire mesh is uh, obviously manifold here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo everything. I'm going to go in here, delete that face. You're going to see now it is manifold, and now if I start running booleans here, right, I'm just going to go in, and also I don't recommend actually keeping it set to exact. I would keep it set to fast and then change it manually if needed. I found things tend to bug sometimes with box cutter, but if I go in now, there's never going to be any sort of issues here, whether there's n-gons or quads, because the mesh here is actually manifold and the booleans are going to work properly, and you can kind of see that here uh, very visually. There's no issues at all. And I'm going to give just one final example here just to really like drive this point home. I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a decimate modifier. I'm going to go here to decimate. I'm going to go to wireframe so I can see it. And then I'm just going to go to collapse. I could even do like unsubdivide. Sometimes that'll, that one's not going to work well. But say I go in here and I just collapse it a bit. Now we have, you know, pretty, we have triangles, you know, n-gons, pretty bad topology here. 
Uh, and if I were to run a sub D, you know, it's not going to be the cleanest shading if I were to go into a matte cap here, right? You can see it's very bumpy. However, although this has an issue with the sub D, it's not going to subdivide well. Notice I can still run booleans on here because it's not going to have, you know, any sort of manifold issues. It's still a manifold object, even though the topology here isn't very good. So again, these topics are completely mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with each other. And trying to say that they're relevant to every single person on earth is just misinformation. And it's going to confuse people and it's going to give people very bad advice when they might not need a particular workflow. So just to kind of end off this video here, notice this cube here on the left. It has perfect topology. It's made of quads, but the object here is actually uh, non-manifold. If I go here, you can kind of see we have the non-manifold edges. And although I can run a sub D on it, and it looks fine on paper, if I were to go in here and you know try to use a Boolean, it's probably gonna glitch out. It's not gonna work very well. So even though I have clean topology on this cube, it doesn't really matter in this you know example. However, this one over here, which has a really, really bad topology, right? You can kind of see that. If I were to run a sub D on this, you can see the difference here. This one subdivides very nicely because it's made of quads. And this one over here does not because it is made of very crappy topology and that's not going to subdivide well. However, I can go in here and I can use a Boolean because this object here is a manifold object. I can go in here, I can add Booleans and there's not going to be any sort of problem. So again, one thing is about structure and the other thing is about mesh integrity. They are completely mutually exclusive. They have nothing to do with each other. So when I see comments like this, I'll put it on the screen again. It's very frustrating because there's not like enough time in the day for us to actually give the right advice. There's so much blatant bad feedback like on Blender forums, on YouTube comments, on our Facebook ads. There's so much bad information that people don't even know, you know, who to learn from anymore. So that's why I like to make these videos here to show you with proof, you know, why people are oftentimes incorrect in this space. And I know, you know, people post hate threads about us. People hate when we actually, you know, point this stuff out and, and tell people when they're wrong. But, you know, we're going to continue doing that because I really value good information in this space because people are coming into Blender for different reasons. You know, you have game developers, you have 3D printing artists, you have concept designers, and each of these people need completely different workflows. So you can't really, you know, throw a blanket statement and, and apply that to everybody. It doesn't work like that. Now, if you want to avoid any sort of beginner mistakes like this and you actually want to understand the right Blender workflow when it comes to 3D hard surface modeling, check out our hard surface accelerator program. All the info in there is clear, it is accurate, and you're going to get only the right advice that you need if you're learning Blender. And we have literally thousands of students that have went through this program and you can see all the results on the screen right now. So don't listen to me. Look at the results right here. I don't see anybody else getting results like this for you know students in this space. So again, if you want to learn 3D hard surface modeling in Blender the right way with the right information, click the link in the description, check out the program, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of value from it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.